So for us with where we stand here at Bent on Better and, and where we stand uh, as nutrition coaches, um, it's important to prioritize all those factors, hydration, protein, fats, carbohydrates. And if you want to have alcohol in there, that's fine too. Just know that there's a right place and time for everything. And if your goal is to see changes and sustainable changes in your long term, then it's not a matter of just cutting things out completely. It's a matter of being more mindful about them. So make sure we keep in check that uh, that glass of wine that we have per night. Make sure it's four ounces. Just being mindful about what you're having. Like you can have the french fries, you can have the potato chips, you can have the, the, the peanut butter, you can have the, all these things. You can have everything in your diet. And that's the goal is what we're yeah. doing here is to make nutrition a forever plan versus a for now plan. Hey, welcome back to the Bent on Better podcast. You're joined by Nick and Matt, and we are here today with uh, with some really fun, I think this is gonna be a really fun one because we have two different perspectives coming in with it. Uh, we're gonna talk about food and nutrition and, and how it all kind of ties in with your goals, um, how it all relates to fitness and performance, and uh, we'll make this one, a, this will be a good one. Yeah, this will be a good one. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Cool. So, uh, well, I mean, first, first of all, we, um, we, What's going on there? That truck just came so close to crashing I, right, through into right. this office. It was like, I have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing a podcast. Let me hop in on that. Oh, uh, well, I, well, I don't know what I was, where I was getting with that. Oh, so, we're, so yeah, with food, um, people, people look at me and they're like, man, he must eat. Like, look at us. Me, me. I get this all the time. Like, you, dude, you must freaking, you must eat. Like, just, you never eat anything bad. Like, how do you, how do you eat? How do you like look the way you look? How do you get so fit? How do you stay in shape? How do you do all these things with with Lynn? I'm gonna do a shameless plug here. Lynn, wife of me, best friend of me and us, also a coach here. But Lynn owns Fresh April Flowers. Check it out. Jaquan, hook us up. Freshaprilflowers.com. Go there. Follow her on Instagram. Fresh April Flowers. Put her Instagram on there, please. Thank you. Follow her. So Lynn makes these really wonderful, amazing, delicious, not healthy options that are in the dessert realm. And um, people, when I tell them people, like most people who don't know us and don't know our story, I'll be like, yeah, like I, we own the gym, but like Lynn's also her full-time job is she's a food blogger. And they're like, oh wow, so she does like healthy recipes and stuff. No, complete opposite. <laughs> like no, maybe like 5% of her entire eight years of blogging are uh, healthy recipes. I do air quotes because healthy is just a generic term, right? right like everything yeah, these days is so generic. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is how we can eat the way we eat and indulge the way we indulge. You said in the other podcast, like you just you just ate a bunch of fries and drink a bunch of beer. Oh yeah, man. like fries and beer. No shame. No shame. Like, and that's kind of how we have to look at nutrition and how we look at it, right? Like, I'm eating because I enjoy food, and I'm eating for my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm eating for enjoyment, but also for my life. And it's fuel for my fitness, but also fuel for my life, but also fuel for my soul. And that's, uh, I think that part gets overlooked by a lot of people. People think it needs to be this all or nothing approach to uh, weight loss and fat loss. And they're like, well, I need to lose weight. So common advice out there is eat less, eat way less, cut it in half. Don't eat anything that you like. Only eat boiled chicken, steamed broccoli, <laughs> and rice. And white rice. And that's it. Brown rice. Or brown rice. Brown no, rice. white rice. Sorry, white, fiber, rice fiber, yeah, yeah. White, white rice is the devil. Don't yeah. eat white rice. Shameful. Shameful. Don't eat rice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people think. I know. And I like, know. it's so sad because I can't, like, man, if you look back at Bent on Better, if you look back, like how this all began in 2015, no, oh my gosh, it must be, yeah, 2015 I did it, but I did it before that too. Um, I documented the entire journey of 12 weeks of just measuring every single ounce, every single gram of rice quinoa. I would only eat rice, brown rice, or quinoa, or potatoes. I would only eat actual, like, I would eat uh, fish, chicken, ground, I would eat any, like, meat, and then uh, any vegetable. But everything was always steamed or baked. There was nothing fried. There was nothing with sauces. It was all just seasoning. And, like, I learned perspective, and I learned, uh, under, like, measuring and understanding. And, like, yeah, I was able to get to be, like, very, very lean in that time. But, man, it, and, like, I had an eight-pack. Like I had all the abs popping out. There are pictures of it. You look it all. Like look it up. Google it. You can look it all up. So now like, we, we have permission to Google yeah, you Matt can April totally, abs. You can totally Google it. And you might find. I don't know if you <laughs> Matt April abs if that'll come up. Be careful. Um, 
but and make sure there are no kids around if you look that up too. Yeah. Um, but like the point I'm I'm getting at is with with food, like yes, we talked about this in the other one. Uh, abs are built in the gym, but revealed in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So if we dial in our nutrition and we're more mindful about that. We'll be able to see abs. Your abs are have always been kajow. Like you, you have the McQueen of abs, where they're just kind of like bop, 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 bop. McQueen, like McQueen, oh, McQueen, like okay. McQueen, like McQueen from like Disney. Yeah, yeah I got McQueen. you. McQueen. From like, Disney, kajow. Yeah, we can go further back than that. Kajow, okay. <laughs> kajow. That's what he does. That's his thing. Kajow, yeah. kajow. And he, well, if you're if you're a Disney fan and you're if you have seen Cars, comment below your favorite part. I want to I want to know because like we we just watched it actually last night. We watched it last night. We do our family dinner. And we it's do on that. on Sunday nights. We do our family dinner, and we all sit at the, the coffee table, and we get to eat dinner at the at the like watch TV in the TV room. And we watched the original Cars of Pixar and Disney Cars mm -hmm. with McQueen. So kachow, that's what I'm gonna think of because you're because you're kachow yeah. like bomb bomb abs bomb bomb bomb. Nick's eight pack is is like Nick's eight pack has an eight pack, um, <laughs> whereas mine like I have like I have abs. I have the six pack, but. <laughs> but to see the eight, you, I gotta like, I gotta be really lean. Pull out the magnifying glass. Yeah, right. I just gotta like, I gotta really dial it in, and I don't want to live that. So what I'm getting at for people is, like, you and I eat, and we eat for our soul, we eat for our health, we eat for our body, we eat for our performance. Yeah. And most people think it's it has to be an all or nothing, and it's not mm. that. And then that's and then we're here, and we can wrap. Look, we just wrap it up here. You don't have Good. to do that anymore. Done. Mic drop. <laughs> Mic push. Mic push. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't have to eat like a bird. Like you don't have to eat like you don't have to eat like a rabbit. You don't have to eat. I'm saying all these animals that only eat like vegetables because that's what people think. You have to eat salads all the time to lose weight, and that's not the case. Yeah, you can. You're not going to enjoy it. No, it's not going to last very long. It's not sustainable. Right. But you can. Yeah, absolutely. You can find joy in that. But it's. Nicer when you can eat for your soul too, right? Yeah. Like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. I love that you use that term, by the way. Because like as soon as you said it, it was like, I know what he means by that. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah. It's important to keep the pipes clean, the pipes being the internal part of your body. And there are times when you can indulge, but by far and large, like you've got to be able to just understand big picture when you're consuming all these things. Um, where do you want to take this? Well, I think it's important to talk about so get, let's give everyone who's watching and who's listening some tips about like what we would tell our members in terms of like seeing results and seeing changes. I hate using the term results, but like that's the yeah. sexy version of it. But like I love painting the picture of like progress. Progress is results are progress, um, but progress isn't necessarily always results. So what I mean is, and that sounds kind of goofy, but it, but like if you think about it, like you can consistently make progress and you can have results if you're not at an end game goal, mm -hmm. right? If your goal is to lose 50 pounds and, and you're here for one and you, you know, you work, do your workout, you train for one week and you eat a salad for one week and you're not at 50 pounds of weight loss, then like you feel like you haven't made any progress. You haven't hit because you haven't hit your results. But in the same term, like you, in that one week, you could have lost a half of a pound of body fat or maybe just sustained the amount of weight you have. And you've been eating a little bit more because you've been lifting a little more and working out a little more and training a little more. Or maybe you've gone up a little bit and made progress, but you made progress in that your weight has gone up, but your your uh, your water composition has gone up because you're taking in more nutrients and you're and you're taking in more hydration, so your weight goes up. Give your muscles what they want. Give your muscles what they want. Yeah. Yes. So we should talk about that. We should. Yeah. When we're talking about my goodness, if you didn't listen to last well, in the last podcast, we were talking about compound lifts. Now I don't know what the you know the release is going to be, but if you if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't listened to the compound lift podcast probably be a good idea to revisit that oh yeah just let's just throw it like, i don't know if there's a way to <laughs> edit you, it right yeah, now and do i don't know that's going to take a lot of editing i'm not very good at that okay. um but yeah just go go watch that go watch that <laughs> episode go listen to that episode whenever it came out um listen to that one about compound lifts it's gonna be it's gonna be it's a good one for you but i think a good analogy to use here is well you know you know when you go for let's say a long walk or you even, shoot, you go to the grocery store or whatever, you spend a little bit of time away from your water bottle or away from the sink, and you don't have the opportunity to drink. You go back, and one or two hours passes by, tend to be a little thirsty, right? Your thirst mechanism kicks in, you go home, you drink a little cup of water. Well, guess what? That water is not just simply because your body was like, I want water. It's, it's you giving the parts of your body that need water the access to water. And guess what? One of those parts happens to be muscles. Mm. And when we're compound lifting, think about how many more muscles we're using in those lifts. 
and likewise how much proportionally how much more water we probably should be drinking as a result and so when we see sometimes we remember we said this not too long ago sometimes we see the increases in body composition particularly in water weight after a week or two of beginning a new training regimen because of that because we're increasing our hydration and sending that water to the muscles or toward those areas of our bodies that need them now a little bit more so than they used to yeah, you're going to see that number maybe go up a little bit, but my goodness, are you going to function so much better? Your pipes are going to be a little bit cleaner. Like I talked about earlier, (laughs) pipes move a little bit better because of that. Sorry, not to go too far off onto a uh, a tangent there, but I thought that was good. That was really good. It was so good. And like, it's important for people, everybody and like members, members. Yes. Listen in very, listen very closely, but also for everyone, when you're starting a new program or a new fitness regimen in any, in any type, whether it's strength training, whether it's you're running more, whether it's you're doing boot camp or whatever it is, whatever floats your boat in fit in the fitness world. If you go from zero to anything higher than zero, your body needs more. And hydration is the number one factor, right? When I, so when I, when I sit down and do nutrition coaching for people, I ask people, how much water do you drink on a regular basis? On average, what, what do you think you drink? And more often than not, I have to ask that because more often than not, people are just like, oh, like I never really think about it or like, uh, I'm probably not enough. Mm-hmm. And like, that's always the answer. And people are right. Like probably not enough. Yeah, that's true. It's real. Yeah. It's real. Um, so before we talk about, we're going to get into this and we're going to talk a little more about, uh, some of our tips for, for eating and like what, how to frame your meals for pre and post workout and things like that. We'll talk about that today. Um, we need to highlight that this, this part here because it's not beating a dead horse. You will see weight gain. Like we all do, we all do because we're human beings and we are more than 60% water, but you will see weight gain when you exercise and you go from any sort of, whether you've, you've been exercising all your life and you level it up or you've never been exercising and you bump it up to starting to exercise or you're, or you're in it now and you're just you're changing your routine like we do. We change our routines. We cycle through our routines and we use, we, pro, we are intelligently designed progressive strength training. That's, that is our entire model of how we do our our, our workouts, right? Intelligently designed strength training programs that progress with the human being as they should. Mm-hmm. You're taking in more nutrients. The way we get our nutrients to our bodies and our muscles to repair it is with the water. So the water is going in there and we're taking in all these extra nutrients. So your weight goes up. And I tell people, please do not ever weigh yourself at home, especially in your first month of <laughs> starting here. It's scary. It's scary. It's the worst thing you can possibly do because you're going to resort, resort, resort back to your own mindset of my weight's going up. I'm doing something wrong. wrong. And that's not right. Yeah. You're, you're actually doing things right. So I tell people the only way you're going to actually see changes is if in the first few weeks you start increasing your hydration and we just be mindful about everything else we're doing here and just focus on water intake and maybe like one or two other little tips I'll give you. Mm-hmm. But then we'll do, we use the in body to actually see what is happening yeah. on the composition level. And so when your weight is up three pounds in the past two weeks, and but we see that your water weight's up and your skeletal muscle mass is up a tiny bit because that's kind of directly correlated on the in body. If your water weight's up, that means your skeletal muscle mass is going to show to be higher because your, your lean tissue is going to hold on to more. Yeah. And then what happened, we actually, what we see it happen to a lot of people, especially our women who have to gain some weight, their weight goes up water weight, weight goes up in skeletal muscle mass and body fat goes down just a little bit. Yeah. And even just in the beginning, just a little bit, but then it starts to go down even more. And when you stay on the course and you stay consistent, consistency trumps intensity every single freaking yeah, time. Man. Every time consistency will always beat out intensity. Yeah. So that's how it is for nutrition. I need to get a water. <laughs> well, it's fine. You know what? While you're doing that, I'm going to put the, uh, the metaphorical cap on this water concept and have you think about it like this. If you measured yourself before a training session, let's say we're in the summer too. Let's really make things exaggerated. In the summer, you measure yourself on a scale, not, let's not say a body composition. Let's just say a scale for now. You step on, you look at your weight, you go, you train. And after you're done training, you go, you step back on the scale and you look at the number. You're more than likely to see a little bit of a change in that number, whether it went up or down. Now we can talk about the, 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 what it means if it went down versus up, but I think we'll keep it simple here and just say that the only thing that should change is based on your water intake during that time. Because when you're exercising, unless you, you know, happen to use the restroom in the middle of your routine, which 
again, think about as you urinate, you're now excreting some of the fluids from your body. Or if you defecate, <laughs> let's use that term to keep it clean here. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah, right. There is inevitably a little bit of water there too. But, but the point I'm making is if nothing happens, if you leave nothing from your body while you're training, the only thing that has the potential to leave you is water, whether it's through sweat or exhaling water droplets from your mouth, mm-hmm. um, or some of the internal processes that are happening nearby cell at the cellular level, right? We're expending, we're using water. That's the only thing that should change. And so you have a direct influence on that while you're training and after you're training. In fact, again, I, I, I don't want to go too far off of this, but, but in a, a few episodes ago, we talked about the professor from Westchester studying, uh, in, in the heat Institute, where I referred to earlier, what was the- Dr. Dr. Folks Godek, Dr. Sandy Folks Godek, right? She studies, um, we'll, we'll, uh, again, I want to keep it simple here for everybody. She, she is known for her studies on what's called the Heat Institute. So we're talking about electrolytes. We're talking about water balance. We're talking about um, even in, in cramping from a result of exercise, right? We're trying to figure out what exactly causes that. And so she will, at, at Westchester, they'll measure athletes on and off of the field, and they can determine how much water they've lost and help them replenish that water. Wow. And so we're talking again about the need for this water because when you train, that number is going to change on the scale, but it's most likely because of the water in that time. So, sorry, I'm going to come back a little oh, bit, oh, put the cap on there. I just want to drive that, that oh, point open, home. Open it back up, though. Open it back up, though. Well, it's important. Helping you understand about water loss and, and gain. Right? And it's so important because so many people get caught up in the idea of like, because you hear this idea for weight loss. If you're if you're geared <clears throat> to think I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, and especially oh gosh, we've, this is a whole other topic too. Like if you're constantly telling yourself I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, you're going to always look down on yourself. You're always going to speak down on yourself. And so instead of thinking I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, say I need to improve my body. I need to or <clears throat> no no that's not even it. Say, I need or I want to improve my health in terms of improving how I consider or how I think about my weight and how I think about my composition, how I think about myself and how I view myself. Mm-hmm. We, need to, we, need to change this, we need to change this narrative uh, from less about I need to do this to I want to do this because it will give me that. So mm-hmm. I like this idea of saying, instead of saying I need to lose weight, I, like I need to lose weight, I need to lose this, I need to lose this weight, I need to lose whatever it is, I need to, do, I need to change this. Instead of thinking like this, say, I'm going to focus on my health for the next year by prioritizing three days a week of strength training, one day a week of cardio, getting water and getting in at least 64, if not 64 ounces at the minimum, but half of my body weight in ounces of water, and then prioritize getting more protein, good complex carbohydrates, vegetables and fruits, and healthy fats. Simple things, simple simplicity will win over and over and over again. But when we're talking about, you were saying like you, you excrete like the different like fluids, right? Guess how, guess what, do you know, we'll keep this really basic. Do you know how you burn fat? Ooh, how do I burn? You know how to get, you know how to get rid of fat? You know how to get rid of fat? Like you, 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 fat leaves through your breath. Like by you're telling me here's, here goes some fat. (laughs) <laughs> by, but no, by strength training and by focusing on training, your, your, um, your actually, your body is, is not, you're not burning. Like you don't have fat burning workouts, fat burning workouts. Doing, like, <laughs> it doesn't they, exist. If anyone calls it a fat burning workout, they're, they're trying, it's the same way of saying you can build lean muscle. We're calling something a superfood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, just a catchy term. But, but like <laughs> lean. Okay. Well, let's go back to this one. Lean muscle. Is <laughs> is muscle? It is muscle. That's like saying wet water. <laughs> That's like let's analogy. get some wet water up in this. Let's get some lean muscle. Let's burn. Yeah. Let's do some fat burning workouts. Some targeted fat burning workouts. Oh god, that gets my skin boiling. Um, or, uh, there redundancy. Sorry, yeah, it's like it's just it's for. so much, and that's un- yeah. unfortunately that's what the fitness industry does. But um, we're always, always trying to sell people on something. Um, yeah. We're we're getting off track. So, so yeah, so, so, you, so anyway, when we're focusing on improving your, your changes in your body and thinking about how we're framing it for yourself, hydration is number one. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about fat loss, we're talking about weight loss, we're talking about gaining or improving your lean body mass. Hydration is number one. Number two is prioritizing protein. 
Too many people do not prioritize protein and too many people don't even know what protein is. So protein, uh, really simple, protein is a four, so there are four calories per gram for protein and protein is, is made up of amino acids. There are a whole list of amino acids that exist, but our bodies can, our bodies have some and can produce some and then our bodies need have, we need to eat them. And there are nine essential amino acids, nine, I believe there's oh, nine gosh. essential amino acids. Oh, don't test me um, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> there are, well, okay, how about this? There are essential Let's amino call that. acids yeah, yeah. that your body absolutely needs to make sure that we're ha building, we have the right building blocks to sustain or to create or to build lean body mass for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So protein, eating it, we have to have it. So uh, I'm going to talk about it from a carnivore like from like eating meat and like eat like not having those kind of restraints, and then we'll talk about it from eating it from a plant. You can call base. me an herbivore. Herbivore, a plant eater, and then a uh, carnivore. Like, <laughs> I I eat. What, call yourself a carnivore. Carnivore is no, you're an omnivore. Omnivore, right? You I would, think you would potentially yeah, omnivore because I eat plants and I eat animals. But I think yeah, for everything. the purposes of being extreme, let's call you a carnivore. Okay, because right. I think it's yeah, it sounds a little bit more vicious. It also right? makes me sound more manly. So. Let's keep is that it. what you associate with carnival? That's uh, I think that's what <laughs> it's the same people who uh, probably think that um, you can uh, build lean muscle and uh, <laughs> <laughs> drink wet water. It's the yeah, it's the association, <laughs> the hot, the heat terms. Yeah. So um, so but in terms of protein, we have to think protein is a building block for our muscles and building block to our body. But the cool part about protein, why I always recommend eating more protein and getting more protein for people, is protein is very satiating. So it's going to help make sure that you, your satiety levels are in check so that you're not going to go off and binge and have that bowl of chips at night with your glass of wine or a plate of french fries with a beer like in the evening hey. or like – I'm like, I'm, 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 you know, know being, being real, like, of course we have to eat these things for our soul, but too often, um, I hear this, like, we'll, we'll sit down for a nutrition meeting and I'll ask about what we do and our habits and, and on the surface level, when someone tells me, oh, like I only have like, well, I only have like, I only have a, a small bowl of chips. Like, I, 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 you know, I'm just using an example. I have a small bowl of chips and I have a glass of wine at night and like, that's it. That seems it. harmless. Seems harmless. But yeah. when we look at it, that bowl of chips is may still be like a regular size bowl, but it's filled to the top and that's actually two and a half servings of potato chips or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then that glass of wine, instead of being a serving of four ounces, it's actually eight ounce glass. So it's two glasses. So when we talk about this from a caloric perspective of taking it in, we're, we're reaching for more because one, we don't have awareness, but two, because we're, you tend to get a little hungry when you get a little snacky at nighttime. Mm -hmm. So I tell people the better option there would be to, if you want, still want to have your wine, still want to have your chips, let's have like a hard boiled egg with that too. Or let's have a handful of nuts, but eat that first. Eat the hard boiled egg first. Mm -hmm. Eat that handful and like palm size serving of nuts. Whatever your favorite nuts are, they can be seasoned, they can be plain and raw, they can be flavored, whatever because it's better than the alternative, which is just to continuously aimless, like mindfully, mindlessly snacking. But if you have something that's protein, uh, and nuts wasn't a good example because nuts- um, They've got protein. They're it, just not a great- Well, that's, not that, their that's the catch. Yeah. I want to really- wanna, I know what you're going I really want to yeah. make this one a value nugget here for people. Nuts, about to blow someone's mind here. <laughs> nuts, like, pe like peanuts, if you listen to that as part of nuts, but like almonds, cashews, walnuts, uh, pistachios, all those different nuts, even seeds, they do have protein in them, mm -hmm. but they are not protein. So when people talk to me and say like they have protein, they eat protein, they'll list they'll list like like oh I'll have like peanut butter on my bread, and like I'll have like protein for breakfast. Well, no, um, that's actually just carbohydrates with the bread, and then a lot of fat with some protein. I'm not saying there's not protein in it, but relative to the sources of their calories, right. yeah, I know right. what you're getting. And at that's here, what we need yeah. to make sure we're mindful about because we'll talk about fats in just a moment here too. But proteins, that's got to be part of the building block. So we're talking about developing more lean body mass, and we're trying to talk about keeping our 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 bellies full so our mind doesn't tell us to eat food, and vice versa. We have to have our satiety levels in check. So hydration is number one. Number two is going to be with protein, getting lean sources of protein in there or clean sources of protein in there. So think anything that comes from an animal is pretty much going to be a good source of protein because it's a complete protein. So uh, we have, you can do ground beef, you can do any sort of beef or steak. You could do chicken, you could do fish, you could do uh, poultry. So like uh, turkey, you could do eggs, you could do any eggs, you could do duck. Any sort of animal is going to be a pretty good, like a good source of protein and, and like the source levels of like how great it is versus like how fatty versus leanness. We have to keep that in check. But generally speaking, protein sources come from animals. Those are great compound or complete proteins. Well, well 
back up for okay. a second because I don't want you to exclude everything else. But we're you're get, saying we're that you can that. get all of your essential amino acids right. in one hit with right. a piece of animal flesh. Right. Okay, got it. Just so like that, that kind of things. And so when we're talking about people who need to be more mindful about getting protein in, and uh, of course we can talk about supplements too. I think it's a note to make, well, they can go in here too, but, yeah, but we have to prioritize hydration and then protein. And then we have, uh, car we have the side of protein that is more on the, on the plant-based side. So if you're someone who is not going to eat or by either by, uh, limited restrictions from dietary restrictions or by preference of what you believe, what you want to eat for yourself and follow for yourself that is sustainable for your lifestyle and what you want to live, then you have to have a protein sources. So we have to build those complete proteins. So Nick, right. so tell me some examples of your complete proteins of how you get the full protein for you yeah. being well, plant-based. Here's what's fantastic is that there is a misconception that you can't consume a complete form of protein from plant-based form, when in reality, that's totally wrong. There are plenty of examples of complete proteins out there that come from plant sources, one of which being one of the biggest crops. Now, of course, I'll talk, there's a little tagline here that I'll add to this. Soy is a great example of a complete protein. Quinoa is a great example of a complete protein. We've got them out there. It's just a matter of quantity of what you're consuming. Yeah. So you're going to have different levels of these amino acids in different plant forms, right? Different sources. And so it does take a bit of investigating. If you're trying to look at, you know, what's the best bang for my buck? How can I consume lower amounts of calories with this plant-based protein source and still be able to hit my protein number for the day, right? You just have to know how to balance these things. And you actually alluded to that really well. You said, I have to balance different forms of plant proteins in order to get, let's say, a one-to-one -one equivalent of a piece of animal flesh, right? Or an egg or something it sounds like so that. Aggressive. That sounds so like- That's what awful. it is. It is. It is. It's dead animal flesh. It's, You're eating it. It's, it is. You're right. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> it just sounds so off-putting when you say animal flesh um, because it's- Why is it off-putting? Oh, we can see well, because I'm not well. Well, I well, yeah. So animal flesh, so like, um, it's 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 animal, yeah, right. But but I'm not eating uh like I'm not I'm speaking me from me. Yeah, yeah. Like we're not eating the the cows. I'm not taking a bite of a cow. Like it's it's the you're not like the skin's off, but it's the uh the muscle the from flesh. inside of it, inside of it. The flesh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's called flesh. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. We'll continue with it. Yeah. So balancing it out with these different sources. So we look to, if you look at history, right? We go back thousands of years. We're seeing people combining things like grains and legumes all the time. And I think that's yeah. the classic example. When you ask somebody who's primarily plant-based, what do you do to consume your protein? How do you get your protein in? Oftentimes the answer is, well, I combine my rice and my beans. Rice and beans it's a yeah. really great, straightforward example. Now, the cool thing about combining rice why and beans. Well, why is it, well, just hit that note. I think yeah, it's the yeah, education, yeah. right? So rice has a certain, a certain amount of amino yeah, acids good. I'm in glad them. You that up. And then beans, legumes have a specific amino acid profile. So the amino acid profile from beans, legumes, and the amino acid profiles from rice um, are incomplete separately. But when you put them together, they make that complete the essential list of what our bodies need. So that's yeah. why people think like that, that so, combination helps. And I'm going to try and reframe the thought here too about incomplete versus complete, because sometimes that concept is thrown around so easily. It's kind of, it's the same idea as people saying fat burning. Yeah. It's a little incorrect because inevitably all of those plant sources are, they are in fact, if you break them down and look at their amino acids, they are complete. However, the volume knob on some of those amino acids is higher than others. Okay. And so yeah. ratio, speaking in terms of ratios, beans are going to have a higher amount of certain amino acids and rice are going to have a certain amount of some of those missing pieces to the puzzle. Mm. And so when you combine them, you form what's called a, again, air quotes here, a complete protein, or you're getting higher amounts of both of the proteins that you're missing from one or the other, or that you're, you seem to be getting less of. That's yeah. important when we're talking about muscle recovery though, yeah. because you want to make sure you're hitting all of those amino acids in order to repair. You need amino acids for muscle recovery. Yes. But you also need it for immune function. You yeah. need to be able to, let's say, especially right now as the weather's getting colder, when we're trying to fight off more illnesses that we're coming into contact with, we need to have the ability to, to have those immune cells in our body or the, at least the reaction to fight off some of those things. And that also goes in hand in hand with water intake. Cause if you don't have those things circulating to your body easily, right? If you're in strain to try and get those things across your body, yeah. then even no matter how much protein you consume, you're never going to get, you had to cover your base. That was the water. And if you didn't cover your base, uh Oh, the protein's going to miss out a little bit. So it's kind of like this, uh, 
building a foundation, like you mentioned earlier, building a nice sturdy foundation on, upon which we can then, you know, continue to fine tune those nutrients. Yeah. Sorry. Let me take a it's step good. back. Where were we? That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, so I think it's a great way to segue then. So, so there's making the, having the proteins come through and, and like, maybe, maybe we put together some, maybe we can put together some sort of like idea or like basic guide I, like of like, of uh, plant-based options and um, and then non-plant-based options for people who have a protein list. I yeah. know we have that. Maybe we'll check out the resource guide and throw that in here um, so you can check out this podcast and download that yourselves. Um, but for for the sake of continuing on the, of, of this journey of building for, for trying to get results and trying to see progress in our composition, mm-hmm. start with our water, we add in our protein. The next one we have to look at is fat. We have to look at fats as a major component to that equation. And fats, again, are very filling, so it keeps our satiety in check. And fats are going to be a major component for uh, how our hormones are regulated, how cells can communicate. We have to make sure that we have fat. We have to make sure we have body fat that's stored energy. That's body fat, right? So we have to have body fat, but it's the in excess of body fat that we have the, the issues and the problems and the complications with our health mm-hmm. that come up. So fat, there are lots of great fat sources. Um, so like the, the oils, um, so olive oil is great. Uh, canola, uh, excuse me, not canola. Um, uh, um, coconut oils are a great option. Uh, walnut, um, pistachio oil, um, and then you could also go into like butter. Like you could go like grass-fed butter if you want to go that route. Those are great options for fat. There's also I'll let you go to the plant. I was about to go into the plant-based yeah, options yeah. for fats, but um, like seeds and and mm-hmm. nuts. Those are great sources of fats. Uh, fish. Uh, specifically like salmon have great sources of fats that our bodies need to have um, and in terms of helping make sure that we're sustaining a, a long term um, long term health so hydration protein the protein should be about 20 to 35 uh, percent of your diet your daily intake and then fats should be 20 to 35 percent of your daily intake let's go over some plant another other plant sources of fats that i may have missed well so you i mean you touched on a lot of really great sources there um and in fact you were talking you you mentioned the now i know this is coming from a plant eater um you mentioned the fish fish have this you know fantastic um form of unsaturated fat you know, it's evading my memory right now, which, which one exactly and, and why that's particularly important. Um, but the tip, typically speaking, the American diet doesn't have a great balance between the two different main types of unsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats. And we tend to consume again, I'm forgetting which one is like, we tend to consume way more of, but it happens to come from like olive oil, for instance, we use yeah. it a lot yeah. and there's a great place for olive oil and all these other forms that you had listed as well. It's just about make sure if you're going the route of trying to be mindful of your fat sources, make sure you've got plenty of variety. That's Mm -hmm. kind of what I'm trying to get at here in understanding that if you only consume olive oil over every single thing that you eat, you're putting olive oil on your cereal, well, no, right? Well, yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah, please don't do that. Please don't do that. No, you can eat, in <laughs> fact, my diet, I have I, tons of fats in my diet um, yeah. because for me, that's a very easily accessible can, form of energy. Can you list some of those ones that well, you I have? I pour oil over a lot of things. <laughs> but um, aside from the oil, like what other options do you do? Yeah. I, I know them, but I want to have Nut, yeah, yeah. the spotlight. No, nuts here. are big for me. Um, in fact, peanut, we, we mentioned the peanut earlier. Peanuts yeah. are really big for me. I love getting a lot of my fats from peanut butter um, and different forms of nuts as well. Steeds, yeah. right? I consume uh, flaxseed every single morning with my breakfast. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Flaxseed as well as oats. Oats mm. have, despite them being more of a carbohydrate yeah. dominant. Carb dominant, but definitely Yeah, carb dominant, right? We're and getting protein. into some of these terms now. Yeah. Um, they have fantastic fat profiles and they actually are a little bit more balanced too. Um, not to mention the fiber that comes from them too, which yeah. is super important too. When we're talking about all these different nutrients, um, avocados. Yeah. Avocado fantastic. man. Yeah. Very good. Really um, good option there. And I think it's unfortunately, uh, I don't know how, or I don't, I don't, I just don't understand why, um, this came up, but a lot of people have like this, the health trend of like doing the toast with avocado toast. Yeah. People call that like a, a really complete or Gosh, complete a really good protein packed breakfast because you have avocado spread on bread with some seeds on top of it and my response is no <laughs> that's not no no um, <laughs> that's not that's a high fat high carbohydrate and the seeds may give you a couple like maybe a gram or two or three of depending on how much you use like and then like, some people then argue like oh I'll throw an egg on top yes the egg is a great well, source of protein, protein if you're looking at protein <laughs> but then we're also looking at this is a calorie bomb so if you have two or three slices of this healthy 
Oh, it's a whole other topic. The healthy, <laughs> healthy food, healthy yeah. breakfast of avocado toast. Um, and like we're talking about trying to, trying to get down body fat, trying to reduce your caloric intake. Let's be mindful about the, how much fats, because fats, as I broke down protein, fats are nine calories per gram. So if fats, uh, be, yeah, not, is yeah. nine? I'm oh yeah, nine, I'm 100% nine, yeah. sure. Yes. I'm thinking alcohol nine calories. is seven, right? So, yeah, yeah, seven, yeah, yeah. We'll add that one I in too. Lost my numbers, Let's add that yeah. in there too. Uh -huh. So, so protein, four calories per gram, is going to help keep you full for a longer period of time because it has a satiety check. Fats are also really great at keeping you full for a longer period of time. However, fats are nine calories per gram. Yeah. So when we're talking about making sure we're keeping things in balance, we want to build the protein first and then look at the fat content and then migrating to the final macronutrient, which is carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Carbohydrates are the easiest most accessible version of, of in our, in our, especially in the American diet of our diet. Yeah. Carbohydrates are so important. And, um, unfortunately they get the bad rap in that like carbohydrates make you fat, they but like, no, fat. no, they do not make you like, let's, let's set this one to rest. <laughs> Carbs don't make you fat. Protein doesn't make you fat. Fat doesn't make you fat. Eating too much of anything makes you fat. Bingo. Anything. It's the, it's the total intake. It's the total intake. Fat. It's the calories. Our bodies are so good and so efficient of use, uh, using what we have. And then once we use what we have, if there's more than what we need to have, it's just going to store it away for later, which is just energy. And stored energy, as I mentioned earlier, is what? Say with me, class. Stored energy is, or stored energy <laughs> is also known as body fat. That'd be cool if we had a little like <laughs> edit in there, like, like a class saying yeah. like, body fat. But it's really, it's really, that's what it is. Yeah. No, listen, you need body fat. You need body fat. You need body you fat. You need it. Don't be, don't be turned off by the term body fat. No. Okay? It's stored energy. It is. However, we want to be mindful about how much body fat we have. So the carbohydrates are a big component there because we all tend to eat a lot of carbs. And the reason why we broke it down is water, protein, fat, and then carbs as the final key is because when we build out a sustainable long-term diet or an efficient and healthy diet, we do have to look at the macronutrients. We look at a 20 to 35% spread on protein, 20 to 35% on fat, and then whatever is left over is how we make up our carbohydrate intake. And the carbohydrate intake can be a full spread of everything. Um, not all carbs are created equal, right? There are more sustainable, um, beneficial carbs like oats, Oat, oatmeal. Uh, that's, oh, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, oatmeal yeah. is so great. Potatoes are so great. Quinoa is so great. Rice of all of all colors are, is great. Rice, right? Wild lentils, rice. Oh my goodness. Um, all, I mean, lentils are also a good, 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 great form of carbohydrates, fibrous carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. But like strictly, strictly just carbs that are really good. Lentils, legumes. Those are all really great carbs that also have some happen to have some fat protein contents in there too, right? We're talking about from a macro standpoint and a macro view. There are carbohydrate dominant foods. Um, the ones that we can have, but we'll be more mindful about that people always give the bad rep are like, like the sugary candies and sweets, like my guilty pleasure. Um, the pastries, the baked goods, the things like that. Like those are all the carbs that like usually potato chips, the ones that aren't sweet, the savory options too. Like you can have these things in your diet. It's just a matter of keeping it mindful and know that the carbohydrates on the list of priorities should be at the, at the low. I don't know why I went like here. Oh, it was at the foundation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The foundation, that's what it was. Talking. And like it's a pyramid of it going up. Yeah. So we're talking about a pyramid. And the top of that one of, of it should be the carbs. And that's how we build it out. And that's how we know that um, carbohydrates are the energy. And, uh, yeah. and oh, oh, let me add this one in here. This is important. So we had a, had a meeting with one of our other members the other day, a nutrition meeting. And our member was struggling because he's been consistently showing up five days a week, which is a lot actually for people. Most people here are yeah. only three to four days a week. Five days a week is a lot. So when you're here five days a week, your body is, is, is has taken a lot of calories, has taken a lot of water, right? And all the other things that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And if your habits aren't reflecting your current goals, then your habits are going to carry over in bad ways. And what I mean by that is if you're working out five, three, four, five days a week, if you're training, you need to take it. Excuse me. You need to take in more. You're taking in more nutrients. You're taking in more water. So maybe you are increasing your water intake, but you're also taking everything else. And if you're not mindful about that build of having more protein, making sure you have good fats, and also having carbohydrates in there, and leveling it out with fibrous carbohydrates with fruits and vegetables, then you're going to gain weight and not gain weight in the way that just is in lean body mass. You're also going to gain in body fat because your body knows what it needs. It needs energy. And if you're working out that often, and if you're not giving your body the right fuel that often, your body's just going to set aside for energy later just in case. Well, think about the signals you're sending to your body. I know it's not quite like, you know, that's not exactly how it works. But if you break it down and think very like 
like a barbarian here, like when you train five days a week, of course, evolutionary as a human being, your body is going to say, whoa, pump the brakes. We need more energy to be able to sustain this type of lifestyle. Yeah. Let's just free reign. Let's just eat, eat, eat. Yeah. And if anybody who's watching this, especially people here know what I mean by squat breakfast or squat lunch, think about how, think about the volume of food you want to eat right after you have squatted in the morning. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Right. We hear it all the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. After squat day, I was ravenous. Yeah. Right. They, I always hear that. Compound movements, ravenous. baby. Yeah, compound. We'll just dial it back to that. Compound movement. I happen to use squats. It applies to yeah. deadlifts as well, but. And bench. And bench. And, and rows. rows. <laughs> <laughs> and all this good. Right. But it's so good. So I think, um, we have, we've really hit the nail on the head for a lot of people, but, um, we do want to touch real briefly just on the supplement thing. So a lot of people also look to the quick fix, right? Um, yes. it's unfortunate that, uh, the fitness industry has really driven it. And like, I mean, that's, if you look at the fitness industry, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And a lot of that comes from things like, um, useless, uh, gadgets and, um, oversold supplements. Yeah. And so I'm not someone, I'm not going to sit here and say the supplements aren't going to help you because they can yeah. and they will. But if you look at it, look at it for what it is called. It is a supplement supplement. It is meant to supplement your diet. It is meant to be a supplement to what you're currently doing. Wait, 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 wait. let's, you know what? Go ahead. Continue talking. I'm so, going to pull up on my phone what the definition of supplement okay. is. So when we're talking about these supplements and these ideas, um, if you are looking to make a change and you're resorting to something that is a supplement, we have to make sure that it's adding into your current lifestyle versus removing things. So the biggest problem that I see with people is that they are, they are, um, you know, using these, 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 diets and these things, these supplements, these companies, I'm not going to name drop any of them, but there are a few of them out there that are terrible. They're, they're, maybe the, the quality of the product is wonderful and the success stories are wonderful. But here's the big, here's my big hang up is that if you tell somebody to eat the normal, eat their meals and, but then replace one of those meals with this shake or start eating these supplements or these snacks based on their diet that you give them, it's a diet plan. And you have to ask yourself, can I see myself doing this for the next 10 years? If the answer is yes, then you're doing it right. Then good. Then do it. But if the answer is, I'm not sure, or I don't know if it's not a clear 100% yes, then you probably need to look at it from a different perspective and realize that what you're being sold isn't what you're, what you're trying to, what you want to be doing for the, for the long term. Short term is fine. Yeah. Like if you're looking, if you're someone who just need, you absolutely need to see the, the scale move and you need to see that for your own self, go for it. Um, you do it. Uh, but, but it's, but remember that it's not meant to be a long-term thing right? and long-term being 10 years, right? Five years, even one year. Some people will do it for six months of the year because January, February, March, April, May, June, June takes you to the summer. Right if you can, if most people, <laughs> both, yeah. Most people don't even do that. Like, oh my gosh, there's a crazy st statistic out there that says um, most people who start a New Year's resolution fail within the first seven days. Hmm. And most people uh, also, most people only, I think it's like you lose around, you lose the average of about eight pounds um, with the New Year's resolution. But the, what you're leaving out is during the holiday, most people, there's also an average statistic, most people gain five to eight pounds during the holidays. So look at that. Because of excess calories in in form of alcohol consumption, in the form of which alcohol, well, we should note that alcohol is seven calories per gram. Yeah. So we have protein, four calories per gram. We have fats, which is nine calories per gram. We have carbs, which is four calories per gram. Then we have alcohol, which is seven calories per gram. And and not to mention, if you're drinking beer, guess what? Not only are you getting the alcohol, you're getting the carbs with it. And you're getting the slowed down metabolism uh -huh. effects of it all because your liver is you processing suppressed it. Suppressed immune response. Suppressed immune response. The hypohydration, we're talking about probably losing a little bit of our water losing that we just worked water. so hard to build up. Oh yeah. <laughs> And so we're not sitting here telling you not to drink beer because Nick did it just the other day. And um, it's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine to have alcohol. Yes. I love myself a good seltzer or a nice uh, cab. Um, or like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like Cabernet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got, you, like, I, got like, I like, like, I like a good wine, red wine. But, um, you know, got to be moderation. So anyway, what were you going to say? Supplement. Supplement is Oh, I, I looked up the, the definition. definition of I supplement. I, right. I don't even know where this the source was. It was just when I typed in on Google. All right, let's see. So this came from, where's the source? Where's the source? Come on. You're supposed to always list your sources whenever you give definitions. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Powered by Oxford languages. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure where it's from. Number one definition, supplement as a noun, something that completes or enhances something else when added to it. Ooh. 
It's good. Not my favorite definition. I feel like this. It's good. I it's think good. it's good. It's, it's not very my favorite. As a verb, um, let's see here. As a verb, an extra, wait, wait, wait. Add an extra element or amount to. So an extra element or amount to your diet, we'll say in this instance. Yeah. Okay. The point of me looking that up was just helping frame the thought of supplement as not as a solution, but as a potential aid maybe in the solution short term, like you mentioned, boom, and then find a way to then replace that supplement, mm. ironically, replace that supplement with the actual solution, right? The long term, the whole food, the whatever, the piece of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> animal flesh. Animal yeah. flesh. Yeah. yeah. It's important. And uh, so for us with where we stand here at Bent on Better and, and where we stand uh, as nutrition coaches, um, it's important to prioritize all those factors, hydration, protein, fats, carbohydrates. And if you want to have alcohol in there, that's fine too. Just know that there's a right place and time for everything. And if your goal is to see changes and sustainable changes in your long term, then it's not a matter of just cutting things out completely. It's a matter of being more mindful about them. Yeah. So make sure we keep in check that uh, that glass of wine that we have per night. Make sure it's four ounces. Get a food scale. Food scales are super inexpensive these days. You can get one for like 15 bucks on Amazon, yeah. maybe even less. I'll probably take one that's like 20 bucks because um, we should do that. I should put that in the show notes. Like, an, like a good, like a good food scale that we use. I have idea. a few that I have on hand for when I travel and also at home. Yeah. But um, just being mindful about what you're having. Like you can have the French fries, you can have the potato chips, you can have the the, the peanut butter, you can have the, all these things. You can have everything in your diet. And that's the goal is what we're yeah. doing here is to make nutrition a forever plan mm -hmm. versus a for now plan. But we have to start somewhere. So we do with the for now, yeah. with the forever plan. And that's the way we approach fitness and that's the way we approach um, nutrition here at Bent on Better is we want to prioritize the forever forever friendly nutrition program mm -hmm. so that you are forever friendly, keeping in mind your soul and your health and all the other factors that make you who you are mm -hmm. and everything. Listen, I'm not going to lie. And if my wife's listening to this, she knows. She's, she's sitting there listening to this going, I already know where he's going with this. I am a cookie fiend. <laughs> cookies me too. and ice cream yeah. are, and I'm not, sh I have no shame about it. And let me tell you, like those containers of those items don't last very long in our household. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not afraid to go out and buy more. Yeah. But I understand that if I do that forever and if I do that every single day, not only is that, first of all, it's not very sustainable, but second of all, what am I doing to the pipes in my body? So although it helps soothe my soul when I want it to, mm -hmm. I also understand that realistically, I can't perform the way I need to perform if I'm consuming those items every day mm -hmm. and in very large quantities like I like to when I do. <laughs> but I also have to give myself the freedom to say, you know what, the value, the payout, right? What I'm gonna get from this, the mental payout, the soulful payout is greater than the uh, whatever, the the initial risk that I'm incurring by consuming these cookies right now. I'm okay with it. And you should be too, yeah. right? When you're giving yourself that permission to try something or do something a little bit different than the norm, it's fine. The stress that you have over thinking about it, debating it, you could argue is probably worse than the actual food item itself. <laughs> yeah. You're dumping a whole bunch of cortisol into your system, which ironically is going to hold on to fat and all those things more. And so it's like, ah, you know what? Just let it go yeah. for that one time. Give yourself the permission. That's it. That's so good. And like, <laughs> this is funny. Like when I sit down with people and talk about nutrition, I usually lead with that. Like with some of my, the things that I eat on a regular basis because I enjoy them. Um, but fun fact about me is that on a scale of one to 100, one being uh, like the lowest possible number and, and 100 being like so good, so strong, like perfect. Um, in terms of willpower, one to 100, <laughs> like Lynn is like, like a 97. Yeah. Lynn's willpower is so good. Lynn can, that's why Lynn can bake all these things, right? Check out freshshaperflowers.com. You see what I'm talking about. Lynn flowers, like the ingredient F L O U R S flowers. But Lynn can Lynn right now where she's making all the, all the holiday stuff. Cause yeah. we're like coming up on the holiday. Gosh, what's that like? So the, everywhere and the smells are so good. Um, I'm, I, I'm follow gluten free, dairy free lifestyle, so I don't I don't tap into it because I choose not to deal with that myself. But with, the point I want to make is, in terms of willpower, Lynn's a 97 out of one out of 100. I'm a like I'm like a like a seven. <laughs> I'm like a seven, dude. Yeah. My willpower is practically not. It's a little bit. There's a little bit there, right? I got. I got I'm, on, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the scale. Yeah. But my willpower is so small when it comes to food. Yeah. So. 
just know that willpower will only last you so long. So if you're someone who's looking to diet, look, look to follow a diet or change your lifestyle, do anything that do things that are going to be sustainable for you long term. Know yourself, know your power. Mm -hmm. I know my power is not in willpower. My power is in fitness power, is in strength training, is in understanding where these components, the, the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats, the alcohol, all those things, how they play hydration, all that plays into a, a key into my life. Knowing those things will help keep everything else in check to make sure that you're staying in balance, being mindful about what we're doing, our eating habits, our drinking habits, our life habits, and just know that what I'm doing is sustainable because it's my life. Yeah. Beautiful. Right? That's good, right? That's pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. So if you're hanging out with us, we're going to wrap this one up by saying thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you're listening to us on any podcasting platform, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a rating. Give us a five-star review. It really helps. It helps us so much. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Let us know what, what are your big things. Like what, where, where, what supplements are you using? Where are you struggling with now with your nutrition? Let's get a conversation going because the more we can hear from you, the more we can provide. And the more we can provide, the more we can change. We want to change your life. So let us know how we can help. All right. So for now, it's Matt and Nick. We're signing off. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.